Hey guys, this is Rob, your online guitar teacher, and now it's time for another FAQ. So I haven't done a video for a few weeks. That's just because I've been working on this course that I've been working on. Um, more information on that is on my website just below. It's basically going to go from complete beginner to advanced, and it's going to be like a process thing. And Anyway, more information is on the website, on the blog. Right, so let's get to the first question. Okay, far be it for me to tell somebody to change something on their guitar, but the pads on the locking nut are sideways. Yes, they are. I sometimes just put them on sideways. There's been commented before, and it's something I should really pay attention to when I'm restringing my guitar. This is my guitar, obviously, with the locking nut and the whammy bar. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't. That doesn't affect the guitar in any way. It just looks a bit odd if you know what you're looking for. So it's not really something that's bothered me. Nice video, man. Just thinking about posture. Wouldn't it be better to have the guitar at a height and angle? that you would use when standing up and playing live? Yes, probably, but I always go with the hands. So I get my seating position as if it would be when it's live. For example, I sit like this with the guitar over my left knee, and I find this is closest to my standing position. So if I can play something sitting down, it's not that much different to playing it standing up in a live situation on a gig. Um, I think the main thing you want to watch out for is the position of your hands. And so if your hands and arms are in the right places, your fingers are going to be in the right place and you're going to be able to play properly. If you're trying to, if you're sitting down and you're kind of doing this kind of, trying to play like this, not good. Um, or the same thing as if, if you've got some sort of weird cramp, cramping up like this. Um, also on some of my videos, as this guy points out, I'm kind of looking at the guitar like this. That's because I generally have it quite high up and I'm looking, I look at the fretboard and it looks like I'm really sort of hunching over. I'm generally keeping my back straight and my arms and everything relaxed. Uh, when I'm playing on stage, uh, I don't tend to, I don't tend to have that kind of hunched posture so much because, especially if I'm in a gig where I'm singing at the same time, because obviously I'm projecting and there's a microphone and all that kind of stuff. So just make sure your hands are in the right position. I'll link to my videos on posture just below and the rest of the, the body should follow. Great video, thanks man. I just got into practicing speed. I played guitar for 15 years but my speed picker has always been kind of messy. What do you advise for hours of practice? Is one and a half hours per day enough? As I say in the blog post specifically dealing with practice routine and setting it up, I normally practice for less than two hours each day. So I know people who practice for four or five, some people only an hour, some people half an hour. What really makes a difference is how you divide that time and what you actually do in that time. Because you could repeat the same thing like a million times in four hours and still not get it any better because you just repeat the same thing again and again. What really makes the difference is dividing that up and saying, okay, I'm gonna work on this and I'm gonna do it until my hand aches or I'm gonna do it until I can do it perfectly three times in a row. These are the kind of things you want to watch for. And then change to something else because you basically, you can't concentrate on something for four hours all in one go, unless you're Superman, probably. Um, so divide it up. I normally divide it up into half an hour sections. So in my two hours, there's four half an hours and I do four different things. Um, more information, as I said, on the website where I talk about practice routine, but that's the kind of thing you want to be talking about. If you've only got half an hour to practice, try like, I don't know, five minutes warming up, 15 minutes doing something else, and then another 10 minutes, but divide it up into smaller sections is the key, really. So that's the answer to that question. Sweet picking in blues slash easy listening is not bad, though. I hope you weren't saying that. No, sweet picking can be used in any style of music you want. It depends on how you use it. But what I really want to get at is it needs to be applicable to the style of music you're playing. If you've got a riff that goes like this, kind of a blues slow thing, you want to be playing possibly kind of bluesy slower things. You don't want to be starting with a It's 
just not appropriate behaviour. Okay guys, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And if you want to help out with this channel, you can donate on Patreon, which I've linked just below. More information and lessons can be found on my website, again, linked below. And until then, turn up and rock out. This can be used as an intro to the solo. Or to get from one part of the neck to the other. Especially if you're going up in the neck that part of the solo. They can be just straight sequences or more free. And as awesome as they are, you always